Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the first in a series of video tutorials on how to make a first person shooter in Unity 5. So this uh, series, we're going to be using version 5.3 of Unity. Uh, if you have a version earlier, uh, then you shouldn't have too much of a problem. If you got a version later, you still shouldn't have too much of a problem. Uh, if you have Unity 5.0, then yeah, that's fine. Any version of Unity 5 will work. If you have Unity 4, then that probably won't apply too much and you should look at upgrading your version of Unity. If you have Unity 6, if indeed you are in the future, then these principles in this tutorial will still apply just fine. The general feel of Unity will still be the same. You don't need to worry about that at all. So our aim in this entire series is to make a fully fledged first person shooter game using different aspects uh, and different scripts, different styles of Unity. This picture right here, uh, you probably will have seen this already, it is the installing download assistant that you need for Unity. You need to make sure that you have everything ticked in this list. I can't stress that enough, especially if you are using Unity 5.3. Make sure you have them. If, for example, you want to build for Windows, make sure that's selected. Android, iOS, anything else, make sure they are ticked just here. So when you start at Unity, you'll be presented with something at least similar to this particular window right here. Simple. All you need to do is put in your name, for example, FPS, and then you need a location on your computer where you need to put it. Make sure you have this in pink for 3D. You don't need uh, 2D, we want 3D. Asset packages, don't need to worry about these. If you don't even have any of them at all, still, don't worry. We'll deal with them as we go along. Just click Done now. And then once all that's set, all you need to do is click on Create Project. I've already gone ahead and done it, so we don't need to worry about the wait times for it. So we just go right here. This is the default window for Unity. This is what it looks like. And we're going to go through um, different aspects and the simple basics in Unity in this episode. There's not too much to get used to. Uh, we won't go into too much detail because we will go along different methods as we go. So this series is aimed at people who are absolute beginners to Unity or maybe have used Unity before and have a little experience but would like to know how to make a first person shooter. So Unity is a really easy uh, engine to use. It's not difficult. So let's get into it. So up here, we have the usual file, edit, uh, menus. We don't need to worry about these too much for now. We will be using at least two of them in this first uh, tutorial, but for now, we don't need to know everything in this list. It's not important right now. If we need it, we can come to it and explain as we go along. So this list here is the hierarchy. Now the hierarchy is where you store every single thing within your scene. So whether it be a main camera, or whether it be a light, whether it be asset, object, anything, it appears here. So the scene view is everything you input. So you can visibly see everything you put in, whether it's an object, asset again, whichever, it's all in this window. This is the main one where we develop our game. Next, we have game. There's not a lot going on right here, but this is where we can physically play our game. Like I say, not a lot going on because we only have these two default items in here. So if you don't have this game uh, tab here, click on this little button and then go to add tab and then click game. By default, I think Unity does put it there, so you don't need to worry. Over here, we have the inspector pane and currently it's blank. The reason it's blank is because we have no object selected from our hierarchy or scene. So if we select main camera, we can see all these options here, numbers, sliders, colors. This is where we fine tune our objects. So whether it be size, whatever, it's all done here. Up here, we have another little button and you can click down to debug. It is similar to the inspector pane, but it has a few extra options. We don't need to worry about them too much. We'll go into them uh, later on in the tutorial. So for now, click back on normal. Down the bottom here, we have our project window. 
And this is where we have all our assets, so textures, materials, uh, models, whichever, they're all stored down here. So then we can bring them into our scene later on. Next to it we have the console. Now the console is basically just a quick little area which tells you if there is an error, for example, in a script we've written. So if we've missed off, say, a semicolon, or whether we've misspelled something, or whether we've not done the capitalization correctly in a script, uh, it will tell us here, it will give us some indication on where we need to go. So, overall, it's an easy engine to use. It, it may seem daunting at first, but it is quite simple. So don't worry too much at all. So first things first, let's get into it. Let's uh, bring in an object. So we want to insert an object into our scene, just here, and I think we'll make it our floor, to be honest. We'll do it really easy. So in Hierarchy, right click, go to 3D Object, and Cube. Or you could do it another way, by going to Game Object at the top, 3D Object, and Cube again. Whichever way, you will be presented with this. In the middle of our screen is our cube, and it's called Cube in the Hierarchy. Over here in our Spectre pane, we'll have 0, 0, 0 for our position. It is good practice, at least at the beginning of your game development, to have 0, 0, 0 for every position on object you put. Rotation, we don't need to worry, we don't need to rotate the floor. The scale is something we do need to change. So the X axis is the red arrow, which will extend along this way. So let's increase this to, uh, it's going to be a large floor, so let's put 100. It's stretched all the way across. The y-axis, which is the green arrow, we don't need to worry about. We don't want a tall floor. Floors aren't tall. Floors are flat. If we were to increase it, it would uh, increase this object size up and down. The z, or z-axis, is the final one, is the blue one, which extends it forward, this way, and outwards. Now, throughout this series, I will be saying z, not z. The reason for that, I am British. And here in Britain we do say Z, not Z. I know Americans, you guys say Z, but not all Americans, I believe. So, as I say, our British will be using Z. However, if we have any fans in Las Vegas, Nevada, hey yo, comment below. So let's extend this on the Z axis, and let's put this also to 100. Now we have a big white floor. It's still in the middle. Not fantastic, it's a bit boring, but at least it's a floor. So let's zoom out. On your mouse, you can use the middle wheel, and if you scroll backwards, you zoom out. Pretty simple. Scroll forward, zoom in. However, if you're on the game scene, this does not apply. Your mouse controls don't work here. So on the scene, if you hold down your right mouse button and move your mouse around, you pivot on the spot you currently are sat at, and you can look around your scene. And that brings us up here to our hand tool. The hand tool essentially moves your view of the scene around. So if you hold your left mouse button and move around, you can look around your scene rather than pivot. With this plus sign, this is the one that you can actually select different objects within your scene. So we've got cube selected, we've got camera selected, we can select cube again. On the hand, it doesn't apply. It doesn't work this way. You have to make sure you have the plus sign selected. If you hold down the right mouse button, it does still pivot. So you can use that option on either the plus or the hand. But again on the game scene, it does not work here, only on the scene view. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in, uh, in fact, let's press F, and it will show us what we are currently set at. So when you have a lot of objects within your hierarchy, and you're not at the right one, you can't find where you are, if you just press the F key, it will highlight where you are, just to give you a visual aid. It kind of helps. Double-clicking places the item that you've just done dead center of your screen. So in this case, we have the cube, so let's zoom in to our cube. So let's click on the plus and select objects. Next thing is 
Uh, let's think. Let's put in some more cubes. So let's go to game object, 3D object, and cube. So you can see we've got another one over here at position 0, 0, 0, dead center. That's fine for now. We don't need to adjust it at the moment. The scale, uh, we're going to increase it a little. Um, let me think. I think we're going to have this like a wooden crate. So best thing to do is if we change it to 2, 2, and 2. So it's double its original size. Doesn't look great. But let's uh, double click, zoom in, we can see it in our scene. Scroll back so we can, that's a bit of a better view. It's currently intersected in our floor. So we're going to use something called snap settings now. But to give you a little bit of insight first, if you were to hold your left mouse button on the arrow to move it, you'll notice over here that uh, the numbers change minuscule. So it's not a lot, it's not a big deal at all. So a bit more, so we're on 0 0.8 now, back down, 3.9. Let's put it back to 0, and we want to move it in, well, portions, I should say, so as it's not intersected with the floor. So we can make it dead uh, on floor. Map settings on the edit menu can be changed like here. So you can get X, Y, Z. Currently, they should be set to 1, 1, 1. So let's change it to what we got number 0 0.5 on each one of them. So they are all equal. Click the X. And then if you hold control on your keyboard and then do the exact same again, left mouse button and drag up, you'll notice it moves in increments of 0 0.5 over here. So it's now set as one. So if we were to set our snap setting as two, it would move up in increments of two each time you did that. So if we hold control and move it this way, the X position also changes by 0 0.5 at a time. So let's pull this up one more to make it aligned with our floor. So it looks okay right there. Next thing, we're going to do another little trick. If you go onto your object and you hold control and press D, it will duplicate the object. So now it looks like both these objects are kind of in the same place. That is true. So it looks like there's one object, but they are both in the exact same place. This can be proven simply by selecting the second cube, holding control and dragging out this way. You'll see it's made a duplicate, which looks just fine. Let's scroll out a little there so we can see. So we've got the floor, we've got our two cubes, which will be crates. In the next episode, I would like to texture these already to at least give us some visual insight to our game. So we're going to be working with textures in the next tutorial. Before we do that, uh, it is good practice, as I say, to right click and rename every item that you insert into your scene, just so you don't get confused. So let's call this uh, floor. Um, 001 I think. I think it is generally good practice as well to have a suffix at the end of every item in the hierarchy. They really could do with being different names because it comes in useful when we get around to scripting. So let's right click, rename this one, and let's call this one simply crate uh, 001. And right click, rename, and let's call this crate 002. Now, ideally, you, like I say, everything does need to be named differently. But you may come up with errors when we get around to scripting in a couple of tutorials time because we need to reference items in a script. And if two items are named the same, you may come up with a bit of a problem. So we're going to end this tutorial there now. Um, we're going to save this scene. So you can do the usual Windows command of Control S, which, well, you know that one. It's pretty much every program on Earth uses Control S or File and Save Scene. Uh, you'll be prompted here with a message to say Save Scene. Let's call this simply uh, Level 001 and then Enter or Save. So now when you click Assets, you'll see that this is now an asset. So this entire level is saved as an asset. This is called a scene, which is all of this, basically. So I'll say, next episode, we're going to be looking into texturing 
and we're going to look into physics as well. Now you may think doing physics this early in uh, game development is a bit tedious, but it really isn't. Unity is a great engine to play around with, especially with simple physics. Uh, it isn't difficult, so we may as well cover it early on and get ourselves some good experience in Unity. So until next time, head over to Facebook, uh, head over to Twitter uh, for regular updates. Uh, we try and help people who have problems. Uh, we chat to people, different little updates. Uh, if you've got a problem or anything, uh, leave it in the comments below. Um, all links are in the description that you need. Head over to our website for assets, whatever. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.